Hi there, Jack Rogers. Welcome back to my IT channel. Today we've got a bit of sort of um, an opportunity to show you an actual business. This business has just moved in, so this gave me the opportunity to film today and show you around and show you how the IT actually works from a business point of view. And as you see, it's quite a, a large office. Um, we've got lots of cabling. We've got some of the PCs up on the benches are done today. So I'm actually going to show you what a network point is. I'm going to show you with patching trunking, things like that. So if you've not been into IT or you're just getting into IT, this is just going to show you how things are done on an office level. So we're going to do some more videos like this. We're going to get an opportunity to go into a data centre, maybe to even get into a telephone exchange uh, for a BT, to show you how BT puts things together. So we show you different industries, how they actually use and neutralise IT. So basically, cabling works this way. You've got a trunking um, port here that holds in power and your data points, okay, and you've obviously got your, your user's piece at the top here. So, th so the cabling, it runs run through this trunk link, it goes around the room basically, and it ends up into a cabinet which we're going to show you in a sec. So this is your power points and this is your two data points here. So your PCs will plug into here, so th this uses a phone, so the phone's plugged into one and you use another one for two. So normally when you're patching a network, you normally patch two ports per PC, so you have one for data, one for phones. These are standard RJ45 using Cat5e cabling, so and that runs through the trunk in. The trunk in separated, you've got two parts of the trunk in. The bottom part is where you put your electricity in um, for your power sockets, and the data goes in the top. Or you can do it the other way around. So to make it, we've got a, the, the actual point is keeping the power cables away from data cables because they can cause an interference if they're actually together, basically. So that's a rule of thumb. When you're running in cables, make sure they are separate away from any power cables. So this trunk will probably have data at the top and probably power at the bottom uh, running through the trunk and keeping it completely separated. And sometimes you'll find that they normally put power in the middle of the trunk in basically running from power socket to power socket and the data ones either goes at the top or the bottom. Depends on who's networking, how they do it basically. But I tend to put uh, the data below because I always find the power lines, uh, power cables are always in the middle of the trunk in anyway. So yeah, that'll run off to the end and that'll go up through the ceiling and eventually go back to where the power and the data points are connected to, which I'll show you in a sec. So two ports per PC is normally the thumb rule. Sometimes people may want more because the user may say, I want a PC and I want a laptop and some other devices they might want connected. So you can actually install more than two for per user. But normal rule of thumb, two points per user is normally the best way of going. As you can see from this um, install, they've done benches on the side there. And, the, and they're basically they're all cabled underneath all the way around. Um, and there's chunking all under the desks so with all the right power sockets and data sockets pointed in as well. So this obviously is just a brand new one, they've just literally moved in, you can see PCs on, on the desk ready to go. And they're obviously cabled um, down this part all the way through. So it's a bit of a mess because they're still moving in and obviously they've got, the, they've got office in there, we've put our points here. So basically I wanted to quickly show you the um, patching switch where all these data points actually go back to, I'll show you that now. Yeah, all the cables I said gets patched around, it all eventually comes back to like a patch panel here. It either runs back to a central point, depending on how the office layout is. This is an actual business centre, so each room or office has their own patch panel. And what they do is they send fibre optic links back to the main comms room, and they just patch down what, what the client needs, like main essentials, internet access, and their phone, the phone connections as well. So in this patch panel here, you've got two patch panels here, which has all the points around the room. So all the cabling goes round, feeds into here, and it's all connected to these patch panels here. Then you basically patch points when you want to go to. So you, there'll be a switch to go in here, data switch, and the data switch will actually be for the internet. And we've got there's a router here as well that'll be patched to the switch. Then all these PCs here will then be patched to the switch, making a complete connection. So they all will have internet access. And if this customer has any, a server on site, they can actually connect to the server as well. So this is the main part part of it, a patch panel. And, uh, and this is how it all gets put together. And hopefully, um, if I can get into their main comms room, which obviously won't be today, maybe another video we'll do, we'll show how, the, uh, how a data center, sorry, business center pumps all the connections out to the actual unit. As you can see, there's a, a, lot, like a bolt load of cable, gray cable there. That's all the cabling coming down from the ceiling, which basically is coming from the wall sockets we showed you earlier. So it's all down in here. And they're all actually patched into this patch panel here. So all the patch panels marked up with point um, numbers. They all represent the numbers actually on the wall by the benches. And then as you can see here, this router is going to be installed. And there can be a switch put in here as well. So all this can be patched in, ready to go. 
this blue cabling at the moment is all the all the phone cables that are already patched in. They're already live on the desks, ready to go for the clients. But um, no, this is just a close up of a patch panel, and it's actually just above the do door they come in on, so it's out the way with. And that's all you really need for a basic network, so not, not too much. Right, this is one of the user's desk here, it's all patched in ready to go, that's his data cable, so that's actually from the PC. That actually gets plugged into the patch panel, so we plug it into um, 04, because they're obviously using even numbers for their phones, and uh, sorry, the odd numbers for the phones and even numbers for data. That's always a good point, is when you're cabling and you're um, patching the ports up, Always patch them. I always start with like 01, 02, 03, 04, um, going all, all around the, the building basically. And always I have a rule of thumb. I use uh, odd numbers for, for phones and use the even numbers for data, internet, and obviously PC to connect to the servers with. So it's nice and easy to remember that. So uh, you can actually number these up as well. You can actually name them as like uh, P01, uh, D02. So you can have P representing phones. D for data, but if you're patching different ports, because sometimes a user may not want a phone on their desk, they may want to have two points for their laptop and their um, PC, so you need to sort of ref have numbers referencing not a particular thing anyway. But it doesn't stop you labeling these afterwards, like putting a P at the top and a D there, just to remind people as well. Uh, I tend to do that with clients, I tend to keep the number in, in as like 01, 02, 03, 04, right way through, and then, then when I patch in and say, right, well, I'm going to use even numbers as phones, is then I'll go around and get a little sticky label that looks like a little phone and just stick it above the top there and then, then I then um, label up a little one called data and then I put it on the other port so then clients can see which ports are which because sometimes when you're actually off site a customer may want to move their PCs around so they're unpatched, they'll move their PCs and put it back and then forget which port's which so having them labelled up they know which one to plug into so it saves calling the IT and saying oh, what, what number did you patch me on and it saves all those questions and answers going back so that's what I do with clients, make it much more easier. So they, so they don't think they have to keep getting the IT guy in doing simple things like this. Especially if the guy's off site, it means he'll travel all the way down here, might be an hour away, just to patch in two patch points where that can easily be done by the client and it will save the client a bit of money at the end of the day. So there you go, this is really simple, very simple network, very easy to do. Um, and basically this is how an office environment actually looks for real in real Just life. to let you know, just flavors of switches. Switch comes in all the different flavors, comes as hub switches. And the difference between the hub and the switch, hub, will see traffic and broadcast traffic over every every single port and it just broadcasts to see what's going to answer on the ports. Um, with switch, it's more dedicated, it's a bit like traffic flow system on the motorway. It knows what traffics are coming from which PCs to know where they're going to go to on the network. So the ports work out which traffic belongs to which port basically. So that's just the, the basics, feel line basic. You can read up on this because there's a lot more to switching than meets the eye basically. You can spend a whole day just talking about switches. So then flavors, you've got uh, different makes. You've got um, this, this make here. This is a, a 24 port switch and it has all lights on there so you know which port's live and active and it also changes color to let you know whether it's connected at 10 meg or 100 meg or gigabit basically. Then you've got some more advanced switches here which goes up a little bit. These are more managed, managed switches which you can connect to. You can see the screens, you can program the ports and change the, the flow of traffic. You can isolate ports from different each other and create VLANs. Again, it's a, I'm not going to go right into it because there's so much to, more to know than meets the eye. So this is just very basic. This is what switches look like. And the basic job is, is a PC will browse and look for something on the network. And, and if it's looking for the internet, it'll say, any routers out there? Hello, any routers out there? And the switch job will say, yeah, the router's over on this port here. Then it tells how the traffic gets from the PC to the internet and back again. So it's just as simple as that. Without some sort of hub or switching system, you can't get the PCs linked together. And you think about the internet, the internet is one global network. It's one big, humongous network that's thousands and thousands and millions of PCs that all connect up using switches somewhere along the line. You get switches in the house. When you get routers, the routers have a, a little small ports on the back is switch, switches as well. That links to cables back to the telecoms company. The data centers will have switches that divert your traffic, tell you where you want to go, and all that sort of stuff. It gets really complicated, but switches main heart of what we use, and in a business environment like this, this is what's needed to connect up um, your PCs. The more money you spend on a switch, um, the faster and, and the best performance you're going to get out of a switch. So if you do not have file saving to your network, or you want to download a lot and you've got a nice big fat internet, then you need a decent switch to make that really super fast, because otherwise you'll get bottlenecks happening at the switch level 
not your internet level, or if you're trying to save files to your server, the switch can also be a bottleneck side of it as well. With, with servers, you can actually have, normally it has one cable that plugs into a switch, and you can now add three or four, depends on the name of that network cards you have in the server. So you can then bind these ports up to make them a nice, fast connection to the server. Again, making your, in, your speed in the network itself quicker. Again, I can't go f right into it because it's, it's very complex, complex um, but I just want to give you the just basic. Without a switch, you can't talk to the PCs and stuff on a business network. So these, this is just a this one's a 24 port switch. Same as this one here. This one has power over Ethernet, so you need to provide. Say if you've got a, a, a VoIP phone, they normally need power down the Ethernet cable. So it says having one cable for data and one cable to plug in the wall for power. So it all comes on one cable, limited in the cables that run under your desk, basically. So this provides power down the Ethernet. We call it a power over Ethernet switch. This is the same model as that switch, but it doesn't do power over Ethernet. Just does basic switching levels. You can control bandwidth on here. So if you want to slow the bandwidth down on your network, say, for instance, you've got an office, just doesn't show, share files with each other, just uses internet, and you don't want one particular user taking all up your, your bandwidth. You can actually tell the switch to slow down for that particular person plugged into it. So there's loads of stuff you can do to switch and stuff. You can isolate traffic out, you know, but again, this is for another video to talk about. So these are just the flavor switches. They come in all shapes and forms, Netgear, D-Link. There's lots of brands out there that sell switches. This is a smaller little desktop version of a switch. These are full rack mounted versions of a switch. Um, so, and, and this, this room here is actually using uh, these switches on their network basically um, because obviously the room, this room doesn't have enough ports so we're taking one port from the wall plug it into there and now we can then add another 16 or 20 odd ports so we can have another 20 odd pcs or devices on the network as well so these are going to be placed under the desks around the room here um, so it gives them more access and they can put more pcs on the top side as well so there you go so that's all all the switches that, we're, that we're, they're using here today <laughs> Oh, 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 oh,